What does it take to get the video from a studio camera? All the way through the complex systems, the patch bays, the DAs, the switchers, to get that signal on the air. Well, in this series of videos, we'll explore just that. We'll cover the various signals used and the paths they take, showing you how the signal gets from its source to the destination and all the points in between. So join us now as we discover the basic signal path within a television station that takes a camera's video signal and routes it all the way through to the transmitter. This is a pretty typical wiring diagram for a broadcast facility. And they can look pretty daunting to the uninitiated. With all the symbols and names, for this tutorial we've drawn up the plans for a typical small television station. It contains studio cameras, a production switcher, a master control switcher, followed by an EAS keyer, the encoding system, and finally a microwave transmitter that will transport the encoded signal to the transmitter. Studio cameras used to be very bulky, specialized equipment, but these days they share many of the features and size of their smaller, portable cousins. Today's highest quality studio cameras are still quite large and have a very large lens, which necessitates them being mounted to pneumatic pedestals that counteract the weight of the camera. But many stations and facilities use much smaller cameras that can double as portable or ENG cameras. The traditional studio camera always has a CCU or camera control unit attached to it. The CCU provides for remote control of the camera's adjustments for the color balance and iris controls, as well as allowing several interconnections that a portable camera would not normally have. The CCU and the studio camera are many times connected using a triax connector and cable. This is very much like a large RF cable that also carries power. The RF signal on the cable carries back and forth all the signals that the camera and the CCU share. Some of the other connections that the CCU provides to the camera are a teleprompter input, so a separate wire does not have to be run out to the camera. A return input, which allows the camera operator to see a separate video feed fed from the production switcher. Analog RGB output to be fed to specialized equipment. A picture monitor and a waveform monitor output to allow for easier shading and control of the camera's video output. When smaller, portable cameras are used for studio work, separate cables have to be run out to them, such as the sync cable, video out cable, teleprompter, power, and so on. For this tutorial, we are assuming the studio has a dedicated studio camera with a CCU, and that is where the video output that feeds the rest of the system will come from. A video patch bay is used to rewire a video facility. It allows the inputs and outputs of all the important equipment to come to one place where they can be reconnected in various configurations. This comes in very handy when there are problems such as an equipment failure and allows the engineer to bypass that piece of gear or to place another one in service to replace it very quickly. Patch bays are made up of two jacks. The upper one is connected to the output of a piece of equipment and the lower one is connected to the input of the following piece of equipment. 
Internally, these two jacks are connected or normalized. With no patch cord in place, the two pass the signal from the upper one to the lower one. When a patch cord is inserted, the normal is broken and the two jacks are not connected anymore. The jack without a cable is terminated into a 75 ohm resistor. The other jack is of course connected to the patch cord. Many patch bays are labeled with a letter and a number. The letter refers to the row and the number refers to the column of the patch. In this way, any position on the patch bay can be found quite easily. The back side of a patch bay can look very complex with the hundreds of cables going to and from it. But in a properly designed system, all the cables are labeled to make them easy to identify where they're connected to. For the purposes of this tutorial, all the jack connections have been brought to one place and consolidated. Normally, these jacks would have been spread out all over the patch bay. The first patch point that we encounter in our tutorial is the camera 1 out to the DVDA1 input. This of course means that the output of camera 1 is connected or normaled to the input of the DVDA number 1 input. DAs, or distribution amplifiers, come in a wide variety of shapes and configurations. At first there were only analog video DAs, but now there are digital DAs as well. Unlike analog video DAs, digital video DAs have no looping input, so they cannot be daisy-chained together. The number of outputs range from two to eight outputs, although four is very common. In this tutorial, we are using digital video distribution amplifiers, or DVDAs, with four outputs. Production switchers are differentiated from all other types by the number of MEs, or mix effects buses, they have. Some production switchers can have many, many inputs, especially those used for live events. In our tutorial example here, we are using a simple production switcher, and the video from the camera is just passing through it to the program output. This is the second patch point in our tutorial, from Production Switcher 1 Program Out to Digital Video DA number 4 in. This DA distributes the program output from the switcher. Master Control Switchers are another specialized piece of gear. They are used to switch the output of a television station. Many of today's modern master control switchers are capable of handling several different program outputs, as well as multiple audio channels. For the purposes of this tutorial, this master control switcher is merely passing the camera one video output from the production switcher to the transmission chain for output to the transmitter.
This is our third patch point in this tutorial, and it's from the Master Control Switcher Program Out to the Digital Video DA number 9 in. The next video DA distributes the program out from the Master Control Switcher. Our fourth patch point takes the output of the video DA and sends it to the EAS keyer input. This is a typical EAS decoder and keyer. This is the fifth patch in our tutorial, and it takes the EAS keyer out and sends it to the DVDA10 input. DA10 distributes the output of the EAS keyer. Our sixth and final patch takes the output of the DA10 and connects it to encoder 1 input. These MPEG-2 broadcast encoders convert the SDI video in into a MPEG-2 elemental stream. The multiplexer accepts the elemental streams, combines them together, and creates a transport stream, which is the main output of the station. The digital STL transmitter accepts the transport stream in and converts it into an RF signal, which is then fed to the STL dish. The STL microwave dish is aimed at the transmitter site, where it is received and fed to the transmitter. Here is a quick review of what we've just gone over. The output of camera 1 passes through a patch bay and DA and feeds the input of the production switcher. It then passes through the program out through a patch bay and DA and goes into the master control switcher. Then through a patch and a DA, followed by another patch and into the EAS keyer. More patches and more DAs allow it to feed into the encoder, where it is then multiplexed and fed into the STL microwave transmitter for transmission to the transmitter site. This has been a brief description of a simple television station's transmission system from camera to output to transmitter. Of course there are many variations on this and each station is different and larger stations will be much more complex. This brief tutorial has covered all the basics of a television transmission chain and should assist anyone who wants to understand their own station better.